Chapter 4 Try Prayer Power In a business office, high above the city streets, two men were having a serious conversation. One, heavily troubled by a business and personal crisis, paced the floor restlessly, then sat dejectedly, head in hand, a picture of despair. He had come to the other for advice, since he was considered a man of great understanding. Together they had explored the problem from every angle, but seemingly without result, which only served to deepen the troubled man's discouragement. I guess no power on earth can save me, he sighed. The other reflected for a moment, then spoke rather definitely. I wouldn't look at it that way. I believe you are wrong in saying there is no power that can save you. Personally, I have found that there is an answer to every problem. There is a power that can help you. Then slowly he asked, Why not try prayer power? Somewhat surprised, the discouraged man said, Of course I believe in prayer, but perhaps I do not know how to pray. You speak of it, as something practical that fits a business problem. I never thought of it that way, but I'm willing to try prayer if you will show me how. He did apply practical prayer techniques and in due course got his answer. Matters ultimately turned out satisfactorily. That is not to say he did not have difficulties. In fact, he had rather a hard time of it, but ultimately he worked out of his trouble He worked out of this trouble. Now he believes in prayer power so enthusiastically that I recently heard him say, Every problem can be solved and solved right if you pray. Experts in physical health and well-being often utilize prayer in their therapy. Disability, tension, and kindred troubles may result from a lack of inner harmony. It is remarkable how prayer restores the harmonious functioning of body and soul. A friend of mine, a physiotherapist, told a nervous man to whom he was giving a massage, God works through my fingers as I seek to relax your physical body, which is the temple of your soul. While I work on your outward being, I want you to pray for God's relaxation inwardly. It was a new idea to the patient, but he happened to be in a receptive mood, and he tried passing some peace thoughts through his mind. He was amazed at the relaxing effect his, this had on him. Jack Smith, operator of a health club which is patronized by many outstanding people, believes in the therapy of prayer and uses it. He was at one time a prize fighter, then a truck driver, later a taxi driver, and finally opened his health club. He says that while he probes his patrons for physical flabbiness, he also probes for spiritual flabbiness because he declares you can't get a man physically healthy until you get him spiritually healthy. One day, Walter Huston, the actor, sat by Jack Smith's desk. He noted a big sign on the wall on which were penciled the following letters. A- P R P B W P R A A. In surprise, Houston asked, What do those letters mean? Smith laughed and said, They stand for Affirmative Prayers Release Powers by which positive results are accomplished. Houston's jaw dropped in astonishment. Well, I never expected to hear anything like that in a health club. I use methods like that, said Smith, to make people curious so they will ask what those letters mean. That gives me an opportunity to tell them that I believe affirmative prayers always get results. Jack Smith, who helps men to keep physically fit, believes that prayer is as important, if not more important, than exercise, steam steam baths, and a rub down. It is a vital part of the power releasing process. People are doing more praying today than formerly because 
they find that it adds to personal efficiency. Prayer, prayer helps them to tap forces and to utilize strength not otherwise available. A famous psychologist says, Prayer is the greatest power available to the individual in solving his personal problems. Its power astonishes me. Prayer power is a manifestation of energy, just as there exist scientific techniques for the release of atomic energy, so are there scientific procedures for the release of spiritual energy through the mechanism of prayer. Exciting demonstrations of this energizing force are evident. Prayer power seems able even to normalize the aging process, obviating or limiting infirmity and deterioration. You need not lose your basic energy or vital power or become weak and listless merely as a result of accumulating years. It is not necessary to allow your spirit to sag or grow stale or dull. Prayer can freshen you up every evening and send you out renewed each morning. You can receive guidance and problems if prayer is allowed to permeate your subconscious the seat of the forces which determines whether you take right or wrong actions. Prayer has the power to keep your reactions correct and sound. Prayer driving deeply into your subconscious can remake you. It releases and keeps power flowing freely. If you have not experienced this power, perhaps you need to learn new techniques of prayer. It is well to study prayer from an efficiency point of view. Usually the emphasis is entirely religious, though no cleavage exists between the two concepts. Scientific spiritual practice rules out stereotyped procedure, even as it does in general science. If you have been praying in a certain manner, even if it has brought you blessings, which it doubtless, doubtless has, perhaps you can pray even more profitably by varying the pattern and by experimenting with fresh prayer formulas. Get new insights, practice new skills to attain greatest results. It is important to realize that you are dealing with the most tremendous power in the world when you pray. You would not use an old-fashioned kerosene lamp for, illum for illumination. You want the most up-to-date lighting devices, new and fresh spiritual techniques are being constantly discovered by men and women of spiritual genius. It is advisable to experiment with prayer power according to such methods as prove sound and effective. If this sounds new and strangely scientific, bear in mind that the secret of prayer is to find the process that will most effectively open your mind humbly to God. Any method through which you can stimulate the power of God to flow into your mind is legitimate and usable. An illustration of a scientific use of prayer is the experience of two famous industrialists, whose names would be known to many readers, were I permitted to mention them, who had a conference about a business and technical matter. One might think that these men would approach such a problem on a purely technical basis, and they did that and more. They also prayed about it, but they did not get a successful result. Therefore, they called in a country preacher, an old friend of one of them, because as they explained, the Bible prayer formula is, where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. Matthew 18.20 They also pointed to a further formula, namely, if two of you shall agree on earth, as touching anything that they shall ask, it shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Matthew eighteen nineteen. <clears throat> Being schooled in scientific practice, they believe that in dealing with prayer as a phenomenon, they should scrupulously follow the formulas outlined in the Bible, which they described as the textbook of spiritual science. The proper method for employing a science is to use the accepted formulas outlined in the textbook of that science. They reasoned that if the Bible provides that two or three should be gathered together, perhaps the reason they were not succeeding was that, was that they needed a third party. Therefore, 
the three men prayed and to guard against error in the process they also brought to bear on the problem various other biblical techniques such as those suggested in the statements according to your faith be it unto you matthew nine twenty nine what things soever ye desire when ye pray believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them mark eleven twenty four after several thoroughgoing sessions of prayer the three men together affirmed that they had received the answer the outcome was entirely satisfactory subsequent results indicated that divine guidance was actually obtained these men <coughs> are great are great enough scientists not to require precise explanation of the operation of these spiritual laws any more than in the case of naturalistic laws but are content with the fact that the law does operate when proper techniques are employed while we cannot explain it they said the facts remains that we were baffled by our problem and we tried prayer according to the formulas in the New Testament that method worked and we got a beautiful result they did add that it seemed to them that faith and har harmony are important factors in the prayer process a man opened a small business in New York in New York City a number of years ago <clears throat> his first establishment being as he characterized it a little hole in the wall he had one employee in a few years they moved into a larger room and then into extensive quarters it became a very successful operation this man's method of business as he described it was to fill the little hole in the wall with optimistic prayers and thoughts he declared that hard work <clears throat> positive thinking fair dealing right treatment of people and the proper kind of praying always gets results this man who has a creative and unique mind worked out his own simple formula for solving his problems and overcoming his difficulties through prayer power it is a curious formula but i have practiced it and personally know that it works i have suggested it to many people who also found real value in its use it is recommended to you the formula is one prayerize two picturize three actualize by prayerize my friend meant a daily system of creative prayer when a problem arose he talked it over with god very simply and directly in prayer moreover he did not talk with god as to some vast and far off shadowy being being conceived of god as being with him in his office in his home on the street in his automobile always near always nearby <clears throat> as a partner as a close associate he took seriously the biblical injunction to pray without ceasing he interpreted it as meaning that he should go about every day discussing with god in a natural normal manner the questions that had to be decided and dealt with the pr the presence came finally to dominate his conscious and ultimately his unconscious thinking he prayerized his daily life he prayed as he walked or drove his car or performed other everyday activities he filled his daily life prayer of, of full of prayer that is he 60 they li sixty lived by prayer he did not often kneel to offer his prayers but would for example say to god as to a close associate what will i do about this lord or give me a fresh insight on this lord he prayerized his mind and so prayerized his activities the second point in his formula of creative prayer is to pictureize the basic factor in physics is force the basic factor in psychology is the real, real realizable wish <coughs> the man who assumes success tends already to have success people who assume failure tend to have failure 
When either failure or success is picturized, it strongly tends to actualize in terms equivalent to the mental image picture. To assure something worthwhile happening, first pray about it and test it according to God's will. Then print a picture of it on your mind as happening, holding the picture firmly in consciousness. Continue to surrender the picture to God's will. That is to say, put the matter in God's hands and follow God's guidance. Work hard and intelligently, thus doing your part to achieve success in the matter. <clears throat> Practice believing and continuing to hold the picturization firmly in your thoughts. Do this and you will be astonished at the strange ways in which the picturization comes to pass. In this manner, the picture actualizes that which you have prayerized and picturized actualized according to the pattern of your basic realis realizable wish when conditioned by invoking God's power upon it and if moreover you give fully of yourself to its realization. I have personally practiced this three-point prayer method and find great power in it. It has been suggested to others who have likewise reported that it released creative power into their ex experience. For example, a woman discovered that her husband was drifting from her. Theirs had been a happy marriage, but the wife had become preoccupied in social affairs and the husband had gotten busy in his work. Before they knew it, the close, old-time companionship was lost. One day, <clears throat> she discovered his interest in another woman. She lost her head and became hysterical. She consulted her minister, who adroitly turned the conversation to herself. She, she admitted being a careless homemaker and that she had also become self-centered, sharp-tongued and nagging. She then confessed that she had never felt herself the equal of her husband. She had a profound sense of inferiority regarding him, feeling unable to maintain equality with him socially and intellectually. So she retreated into an antagonistic attitude that manifested itself in petulance and criticism. <coughs> the minister saw that the woman had more talent, ability, and charm than she was revealing. He suggested that she create an image or picture of herself as capable and attractive. He whimsically told her that God runs a beauty parlor and that faith techniques could put beauty on a person's face and charm and ease in her manner. He gave her instruction in how to pray and how spiritually to picturize. He also advised her to hold a mental image of the restoration of the old time companionship to visualize the goodness in her husband and to picture a restored or harmony between the two of them. She was to hold this picture with faith. In this manner, he prepared her for a most interesting personal victory. About this time, her husband informed her that he wanted a divorce. She had conquered herself to the extent of being able to receive this request with calmness. She simply replied that she was willing if he wanted it, but suggested a deferral of the decision for 90 days on the ground that divorce is, is so final. If at the end of 90 days you still feel that you want a divorce, I will cooperate with you. She said this calmly. He gave her a quizzical look, for he had expected an outburst. <clears throat> night after night he went out, and night after night she sat at home. But she pictured him as seated in his old chair. He was not in that chair, but she pictured an image of him there, comfortably reading as in the old days. She visualized him pottering around the house, painting and fixing things as he had formerly done. She even pictured him drying the dishes as he did when they were first married. She visualized the two of them playing golf together and taking hikes as they once did. She maintained this picture in steady faith, and one night, there he actually sat in his old chair. 
She looked twice to be sure that it was the reality rather than the picturization, but perhaps a picturization is a reality, for at any rate the actual man was there. Occasionally he would be gone, but more and more nights he sat in his chair. Then he began to read to her as in the old days. Then one sunny afternoon he asked, What do you say to a game of golf? The days went by pleasantly until she realized that the ninetieth day had arrived. So that evening, she said quietly, Bill, this is the ninetieth day. What do you mean, he asked, puzzled, the ninetieth day. Why don't you remember? We agreed to wait ninety days to settle the divorce matter, and this is the day. He looked at her for a moment, then hidden behind his paper, turned a page saying, don't be silly. I couldn't possibly get along without you. Where did you ever get the idea I was going to leave you? The formula proved a powerful mechanism. She prayerized, she picturized, and the sought for result was actualized. Prayer power solved her problem and his as well. I have known many people who have successfully applied this technique not only to personal affairs, but to business matters as well. When sincerely and intelligently brought into situations, the results have been so excellent that this must be regarded as an extraordinarily efficient method of prayer. People who take this method seriously and actually use it get astonishing results. At an industrial convention banquet, I was seated at the speaker's table next to a man who, though a bit on the rough side, was very likable. He may have felt a bit cramped by his proximity to a preacher, which obviously wasn't his usual company. During the dinner, he used a number of theological words, but they were not put together in a theological manner. After each outburst, he apologized, but I advised him that I had heard all the, those words before. He told me that he had been a church attendant as a boy, but had, for, but had gotten away from it. He gave me the, the, that old story, which I have heard all my life, and which even now people will get off as something entirely new, viz. I, when I was a boy, my father made me go to Sunday school and church and cram religion down my throat. So when I got away from home, I couldn't take it anymore and have seldom been to church since. This man then observed that perhaps he should start going to church since he was getting old. I commented that he would be lucky to find a seat. This surprised him, for he did not think anybody went to church anymore. I told him that more people attend church each week than frequent any other institution in the country. This rather bowled him over. He was head of a medium-sized business, and he fell to, to telling me how much money his firm took in last year. I told him I knew quite a few churches who take exceeded that. This really hit him in the solar plexus, and I noted his respect for the church mounting, mounting by leaps and bounds. I told him about the thousands of religious books that are sold. More than any other type of book. Maybe you fellows in the church are on the ball at that, he sl sl slanglingly remarked. At this moment, another man came up to our table and enthusiastically told me that something wonderful had happened to him. He said he had been very depressed, for things hadn't been going well with him. He decided to get away for a week or so, and on this vacation read one of my books in which practical faith techniques are outlined. He said this brought him the first satisfaction and peace he had felt. He encouraged him as to his own possibilities. He began to believe that the answer to his trouble was practical religion. So, he asked, I began to practice the spiritual principles presented in your book. I began to believe and affirm that with God's help, the objectives I was endeavoring to accomplish could be achieved. A feeling came over me that everything was going to be alright, and from 
and from then on, nothing could upset me. I absolutely knew it was going to be okay, so I began to sleep better and feel better. I felt as if I had taken a tonic. My new understanding and practice of spiritual techniques were the turning point. When he left us, my table companion, who had listened in on this recital, said, I never heard anything like that before. That fellow talks about religion as happy and workable. It was never presented to me that way. He also gives the impression that religion is almost a science, that you can use it to improve your health and do better in your job. I never thought of religion in that connection. Then he added, but do you know what struck me? It was the look on that guy's face. Now the curious fact is that when my table companion made that statement in made a statement, a semblance of the same look was on his own face. For the first time he was getting the idea that religious faith is not something pianist stuffy but is a scientific procedure for successful living. He was observing at first hand the practical working of prayer, power, and personal experience. Personally, I believe that prayer is a sending out of vibrations from one person to another and to God. All the universe is in vibration. There are vibrations in the molecules of a table. The air is filled with vibrations. The reaction between human beings is also in vibration. When you send out a prayer for another person, you employ the force inherent in a spiritual universe. You transport from yourself to the other person a sense of love, helpfulness, support, a sympathetic, powerful understanding, and in this process you awaken vibrations in the universe through which God brings to pass the good objectives prayed for. Experiment with, these, with this principle and you will know its amazing results. For example, I have a habit which I use often of praying for people as I pass them. <clears throat> I remember being on a train traveling through West Virginia when I had a curious thought. I saw a man standing on a station platform when the train moved on and he passed from sight. It occurred to me that I was seeing him for the first and last time. His life and mine touched slightly for just a fraction of an instant. He went his way and I went mine. I wondered how his life would turn out. Then I prayed for that man, sending out an affirmative prayer that his life would be filled with blessings. Then I began praying for other people as I saw on the train past. I prayed for a man plowing in the field and asked the Lord to help him. And give him a good crop. I saw a mother hanging up clothes and that line of freshly washed garments told me she had a large family. A glimpse of her face and the way in which she handled the clothes of the children told me she was a happy woman. I prayed for her that she would have a happy life, that her husband would always be true to her and that she would be true to him. I prayed that they might be a religious family and that the children would grow up strong, honorable young people. In one station I saw a man leaning half asleep against the wall and I prayed that he would wake up and get off relief and amount to something. Then we stopped at a station and there was a lovable little kid, one pants leg longer than the other, shirt open at the neck, wearing a too big sweater hair tussled, face dirty. He was sucking a lollipop and working hard on, hard on it. I prayed for him, and as the train started to move, he looked up at me and gave me the most wonderful smile. I knew my prayer had caught him, and I waved to him, and he waved back at me. I shall never see that boy again in all likelihood, but our lives touched. It had been a cloudy day up to that point, but suddenly the sun came out, and I think there was a light in the boy's heart, for it was revealed on his face. I know that my heart felt happy. I am sure it was because the power of God was moving in a circuit through me, to the boy and back to God. And we were all under the spell of, power, of prayer power. One of the important functions of prayer 
is as a stimulus to creative ideas. <clears throat> Within the mind are all the resources needed for successful living. Ideas are present in consciousness which, when released and given scope together with proper implementation, can lead to the successful operation of any project or undertaking. When the New Testament says, the kingdom of God is within you, Luke 17, 21, it is informing us that God our creator has laid up within our minds and personalities all the potential powers and ability we need for constructive living. It remains for us to tap and develop these powers. For example, a man of my acquaintance is connected with a business where he is the chief of four executives. At regular intervals, these men have what they call an idea session, the purpose of which is to tap all the creative ideas lurking in the minds of any of the four. For this session, they use a room without telephones, buzzers, or other usual office equipment. The double window is fully insulated so that street noises are for the most part eliminated. Before starting the session, the group spends 10 minutes in silent prayer and meditation. They conceive of God as creatively working in their minds. Each in his own way silently prays, affirming that God is about to release from his mind the proper ideas needed in the business. Following the quiet period, all, starts t all start talking, pouring on ideas that have come to their minds. Memos of the ideas are written upon cards and thrown on the table. No one is permitted to criticize any idea at this particular juncture, for argument might stop the flow of creative thought. The cards are gathered up and each one is, evalu is evaluated at a later session. But this is the idea tapping session stimulated by prayer power. When this practice was inaugurated, a high school percentage of the ideas suggested proved to be without particular value. But as the sessions continued, the percentage of good ideas increased. Now many of the best suggestions which have later demonstrated their practical value were evolved in the idea session. As one of the executives explained, we have come up with insights that not only show on our balance sheet, but we have also gained a new feeling of confidence. Moreover, there is a deeper feeling of fellowship among the four of us, and this has spread to others in the organization. Where is the old-fashioned businessman, businessman who says that religion is theoretical and has no place in business? Today, any successful and competent businessman will employ the latest and best, best tested methods in production, distribution, and administration, and many are discovering that one of the greatest of all efficiency methods is prayer power. Alert people everywhere are finding that by trying prayer power they feel better, work better, do better, sleep better, are better. My friend Grove Patterson, editor of the Toledo Blade, is a man of remarkable vigor. He says that his energy results in part at least from his methods of prayer. For example, he likes to fall asleep while praying. For he believes that his subconscious is most relaxed at that time. It is in the subconscious that our life is largely governed. If you drop a prayer into the subconscious at the moment of its greatest relaxation, the prayer has a powerful effect. Mr. Patterson chuckled as he said, Once it worried me because I would fall asleep while praying. Now I actually try to have it so. Many unique methods of prayer have come to my attention, but one of the most effective is that advocated by Frank Laubach in his excellent book, Prayer, The Mightiest Power in the World. I regard this as one of the most practical books on prayer, for it outlines fresh prayer techniques that work. Dr. Laubach believes that actual power is generated by prayer. 
One of his methods is to walk down the street and shoot prayers at people. He calls this type of praying flash prayers. He bombards passers-by with prayers, sending out thoughts of goodwill and love. He says that people passing him on the street as he shoots prayers at them often turn around and look at him and smile. They feel the emanation of a power like electrical energy. In a bus, he shoots prayers at his fellow passengers. Once he was sitting behind a man who seemed to be very gloomy. He had noticed when he entered the bus that the man had a scowl on his face. He began to send out toward him prayers of goodwill and faith. Conceiving of these prayers as surrounding him and driving into his mind. Suddenly, the man began to stroke the back of his head. And when he left the bus, the scowl was gone and the smile had replaced it. Dr. Laubach believes that he has often changed the entire atmosphere of a car or bus full of people by the process of swishing love and prayers all around the place. In a Pullman club, in a Pullman club car, a half intoxicated man was quite boorish and rude, talking in an overbearing manner and generally making himself obnoxious. I felt that everyone in the car took a dislike to him. Halfway down the car from him, I determined to try Frank Lawbach's method, so I started to pray for him, meanwhile visualizing his better self and sending out thoughts of goodwill toward him. Presently, for no seemingly apparent reason, the man turned in my direction, gave me a, a most disarming smile, and raised his hand in a gesture of salute. His attitude changed and he became quiet. I, all, I have every reason to believe that the prayer thoughts effectively reached out toward him. It is my practice before making a speech to any audience to pray for the people present and to send out thoughts of love and goodwill toward them. Sometimes I select out of the audience one or two people who seem to be either depressed or even antagonistic and send my prayer thoughts and goodwill attitudes specifically toward them. Recently addressing a Chamber of Commerce annual dinner in a southwestern city, I noticed a man in the audi audience who seemed to be scowling at me. It was altogether possible that his facial expression was not in any way related to me, but he seemed antagonistic. Before starting to speak, I prayed for him and shot a series of prayers and goodwill thoughts in his direction. As I spoke, I continued to do this. When the meeting was over, while shaking hands with those around me, suddenly my hand was caught in a tremendous clasp and I was looking into the face of the man. He was smiling broadly. Frankly, I did not like you when I came to this meeting, he said. I do not like preachers and saw no reason for having you a minister as speaker at our Chamber of Commer Commerce dinner. I was hoping that your speech would not be successful. However, as you spoke, something seemed to touch me. I feel like a new person. I had a strange sense of peace. And doggone it, I like you. It was not my speech that had this effect. It was the emancipation of prayer power. In our brains, we have about 2 billion little storage batteries. The human brain can send off power by thoughts and prayers. The human body's magnetic power has actually been tested. We have thousands of little sending stations, and when these are turned up by prayer, it is possible <clears throat> for tremendous power to flow through a person and to pass between human beings. We can send off power of prayer, which acts as both ascending and receiving station. There was a man, an alcoholic, with whom I had been working. He had been dry, as the alcoholics anonymous term it, for about six months. He was on a business trip, and one Tuesday afternoon, about four o'clock, I had a strong impression that he was in trouble. This man dominated my thoughts. I felt something drawing me, so I dropped everything and started praying for him. 
I prayed for about a half hour, and then the impression seemed to let up, and I discontinued my prayers. A few days later, he telephoned me. I have been in Boston all week, he said, and I want you to know I'm still dry, for early in the week, I had a very hard time. Was it on Tuesday at four o'clock, I asked. Astonished, he replied. Why, yes. How did you know? Who told you? Nobody told me, I replied. That is, no human told me. I described my feelings concerning him on Tuesday at four o'clock and told and told about praying for him and for half an hour. He was astounded and explained. I was at the hotel and stopped in front of a bar. I had a terrible struggle with myself. I thought of you, for I needed help badly right then, and I started to pray. Those prayers started out from him reached reached me and I began to pray for him both of us joining in prayer completed the circuit and reached God and the man got his answer in the form of strength to meet the crisis and what did he do he went to the drugstore bought a box of candy and ate all of it without stopping that pulled him through he declared prayer and candy a young married woman admitted she was filled with hates, also very apprehensive, always worrying about her children, whether they would be sick or get into an accident or fail in school. Her life was a pathetic mixture of dissatisfaction, fear, hate, and unhappiness. I asked her if she ever prayed. She said, only when I get up, when I, only when I get so up against it that I am just desperate. But I must admit that prayer doesn't mean anything to me, so I don't pray very often. I suggested that the practice of real prayer could change her life and give her some instructions in sending out love thoughts instead of hate, hate thoughts and confidence thoughts instead of fear thoughts. I suggested that every day at the, at the time for the children to come home from school she pray and make her prayers an affirmation of God's protective goodness. Doubtful at first, she became one of the most enthusiastic advocates and practicers of prayer I have ever known. She avidly read books and pamphlets and practices every effective prayer power technique. This procedure revamped her life as, it, as is illustrated by the following letter which she wrote me recently. I feel that my husband and I have both made wonderful progress in the last few weeks. My greatest progress dates from the night you told me that every day is a good day if you pray. I began to put into practice the idea of affirming that this would be a good day the minute I woke up in the morning and I can positively say that I have not had a bad or upsetting day since that time. The amazing thing is that my my days actually haven't been any smoother or more or any more free from petty annoyances than they than they ever were but they just don't seem to have the power to upset me anymore every night i begin my prayers by listing all the things for which i am grateful little things that happened during the day which added to the happiness of my day I know that this habit has geared my mind to pick out the nice things and forget the unpleasant ones. The fact that for six weeks I have not had a single bad day and have refused to get downhearted with anyone is really marvelous to me. She discovered amazing power in trying prayer power. You can do the same. Following are ten rules for getting effective results from prayer. 1. Set aside a few minutes every day. Do not say anything. Simply practice thinking about God. This will make your mind spiritually receptive. 2. Then pray orally, using simple, natural words. Tell God anything that is on your mind. Do not think you must use stereotyped pianist phrases. Talk to God in your own language. He understands it. 3. Pray as you go about the business of the day, on the subway or bus or at your desk. 
Utilize minute prayers by closing your eyes to shut out the world and concentrating briefly on God's presence. The more you do this every day, the nearer you will feel God's presence. 4. Do not always ask when you pray, but instead affirm that God's blessings are being given and spend most of your prayers giving thanks. 5. Pray with the belief that sincere prayers can reach out and surround your loved ones with God's love and protection. 6. Never use a negative thought in prayer. Only positive thoughts get results. 7. Always express willing, willingness to accept God's will. Ask for what you want, but be willing to take what God gives you. It may be better than what you ask for. 8. Practice the attitude of putting everything in God's hands. Ask for the ability to do your best and to leave the results confidently to God. 9. Pray for people you do not like or who have mistreated you. Resentment is a blockade number one is a blockade number one of spiritual power. 10. Make a list of people for whom to pray. The more you pray for other people, especially those not connected with you, the more prayer results will come back to you.